The tunnel was still having reliability issues. One suggestion that had been thrown at me was using a blast of compressed air to blow Sonic back to the start point, so I'd stocked upon pumps and an air tank to test their effectiveness. A quick test appeared effective, but there were a few things I'd need to work out to make this work. The first was where I could install the hose discreetly while remaining effective. Second was a system to open and close the pneumatic switch, and third was timing the opening to coincide with the first arm of the tunnel. My first thought was installing the hose inside the platform behind the spring, then poking the nozzle through a hole, but the first test was poor, possibly due to being partially blocked by the elastic band. A second test in a new position didn't perform any better though, which got me wondering whether blasting air through a hole was the issue. Another test with the nozzle above the wall did perform better initially, but several more tests, including one without the wall, produced wildly varying results. I tested fixing the nozzle into the floor next to the run, but this gave equally mixed results. They were still positive results though. Whether it took one, two or more blasts to move Sonic into position, he would still get there. Maybe two nozzles could help by covering a longer range. As the connector attached to the dishes was just clipping the floor nozzle, I reinstalled it above the room, and installed the second nozzle back behind the elastic band. This didn't even move Sonic, and I couldn't feel any air blowing against my finger. I double checked with two shorter hoses, but it seemed I may need two air tanks for two air blasters. I went back to a single nozzle design for now, and got thinking about the next part of the puzzle. Timing. The air blast needed to happen at just the right time to push Sonic into the path of the first lift arm, but I'd first need a mechanism to open and close the switches. I didn't want a continuous opening and closing, it needed to be short and sharp, so I copied the neighbouring stepper system with an added cam to close the switch. It wasn't going to be so easy adding the switch to the stepper though. The stepper rotates in 90 degree increments, and positions the output vertically or horizontally, but switches only move around 60 degrees. I thought I could maybe connect the stepper's output to a linkage that would push and pull the switch, but a quick test proved unsuccessful. Maybe I'd have better luck gearing down the output to reduce the degree of rotation. A 3 to 2 ratio would reduce 90 degrees to 60, and could be done using a 16 tooth gear to drive a 24 tooth gear. The gearing did successfully reduce the output rotation to 60 degrees, but when tested with a switch it only moved it halfway. Looking down through the mechanism I could see that the turn wheel was rotating 90 degrees when I manually pushed the switch. The issue lay with the cams pushing the turn wheel just far enough to let them slip by, which was around 45 degrees, thus moving the switch halfway. I thought I'd test a more basic rig to rotate the turn wheel, which I had more success with, but it was opening and closing the switch too frequently, and slowing the cams down would open it too slowly. I somehow needed to increase the speed of the movement while simultaneously decreasing the frequency. Maybe I could use a gear shifter to switch to a redundant gear for a length of time, then switch back to a gear driving the cams that would quickly open and close the pneumatic switch. I'd been thinking about using a gear with a clutch. This way I didn't have to be concerned with how far the output rotated. It could rotate as far as the switch would allow, and then slip the clutch. The gear was able to move a switch, but it wasn't very responsive with the movement, so I didn't feel it would be reliable enough for this mechanism. I got wondering whether cams could directly push on the switch's lever, and ran a few tests with different lengths and distances, but I couldn't find a combination with which I was happy it would move the lever far enough and it wouldn't jam. At one point I did think I had something, but later realised the cams would be too close to each other. I also struggled with cams to push the turn wheel. As I felt this wasn't working out, I reverted back to the stepper idea, and spent some time off stream designing the ultimate lever puller 5000, guaranteed to pull even the leveriest of levers. Well, that's that then. I needed something even stronger. I knew a pneumatic piston could move a switch, but then I'd need a switch to control the piston, then another piston to open that switch, and so on and so forth. Maybe an actuator could work, if I could make it move at a quick enough rate. I'd need to really ramp up the input speed, so I tried a 1 to 5 gear ratio, but it still didn't look quick enough, and it was kinda difficult to turn the input. 
I tried building an actuator with a gear rack that moved much quicker, but again the stepper mechanism didn't have enough power to drive it. I didn't know what else I could do at this point, a stepper wasn't strong enough and other methods weren't quick enough. I needed the lever to spring open and blast air at... Springs? I'd used the spring in my Jurassic Park build to rapidly push open the door, then compressed the spring with a lever and cam system to close the door. The spring certainly had enough power to move a switch, so I put together a test frame with a compression system. I initially opted for a hard spring, but felt it required too much force to compress, so I swapped it out for a soft spring. It still looked snappy enough opening the switch. As I'd finally leveled my desk, at least in one direction, I was able to test it out on Sonic. Not the most forceful of movements, but it should be enough. I tested again with the hard spring, but there was no noticeable difference in performance, so it made sense to use the softer spring. The system ran well once he installed it in place, even running with the swing and columns on a single medium motor. The next test was of the pumps, and whether sufficient air pressure would be built up between releases. Six pumps seemed near the limit for a single motor, so I was thinking three pumps per tank, and it did produce enough force. Until I tried running everything on a single motor. I tried again running the pumps on their own motors, which gave a much better result, though I guess I didn't level my desk quite as well as I thought. I thought I'd try more of a slant on the ground, as I could actually move it further than expected without edges colliding. I first tried simply placing another plate under the right side, making it 1.5 plates higher than the left side, which definitely helped encourage Sonic along, but it looked a little excessive so I made some minor changes to the framework to give me one plate total difference. Paired with the air blaster, this worked really effectively, though the timing with the first lift arm was just a little off. To maximise output, I added in another six pumps, creating a custom cradle for the pumps and hoses. I got on a bit of a roll redesigning the framework from here, completely redesigning everything behind the waterfalls and tunnel to be much stronger and more efficient. I'd placed a gear with a clutch at the start of the drivetrain, so that if any jams occurred it would stall. However, the clutch didn't have enough torque to drive the pneumatic switches as standard. I read that gearing the drivetrain down after a clutched gear increased the amount of torque required to stall the clutch which did give it enough torque to drive the switches, but now the clutch wouldn't stall if there was a blockage. Give me a lever long enough and I shall move the world. I could increase the force of the lever by increasing its length. I first tried out a slightly longer 5 long lift arm, but observed there was no real time between the cam releasing and pressing the lever. If I wanted an even longer lever, I'd need a larger cam to cover the distance travelled and found that curved gear racks were just what I needed. I'd also discovered that pullback motors were perfect for returning the lever, as they wouldn't push against the frame and I could set the tension, 